In this lesson, we're going to take a look at another more complex game played by two stronger opponents. It's not going to be just dividing the board in half, but there's going to be more fighting in it. You will get a feel for how Go can be played more aggressively, and you will learn the last remaining rule in Go. Here we go. Black starts the game with the center point. This move is very common on this small 9x9 board, because it dominates the board and it prepares to attack white no matter what white plays next. I'm not going to do much commentary here, so just try to relax and feel the flow of the game. This puts the white stone on the second line in Atari. And as we learned from the first game that I showed you, there is really no way of saving it. So how should white continue? If it's impossible to save the stone, the best white can do here is to give it up. And white captures this black stone. Now it's time for black to attack the lonely white stone in the corner. After this, it's fairly clear what territories black and white are aiming for. Now it's time for both players to strengthen the borderlines, enlarge their own territories, and reduce what the opponent has. But the game is not over yet. Normally, what I would just play here to protect their corner territory. And yet in this game, white decided to go for an exchange. And Atari, black gives up the stone. And takes those three. This is an exchange. Now let's see what white gets in return. White has an interesting follow-up here. It might seem that black gained more because black got three stones and white only two, but in fact, black also lost a big part of their bottom territory. Take a look, here's before, and here's after. White wants to cut off the black stones on the right. and it seems like they're actually cut off. But white is missing an important thing here. Do you see how black can save those stones? The two white stones are in Atari, and black can capture them right now. After this, this stone is also in Atari, so white captures it back. And the black stones are now saved, but the game continues. And here comes the exciting part. First of all, because of the magical properties of the corner, white can't really connect here. White would like to connect these stones, but in this case, black would play here and capture all of these stones. So the only way for white is to connect here. And now this stone is an Atari. So it seems that black can just capture the stone right now. But after this, 
this stone is in a target. So can white just capture it back? And now black can capture this stone again? And now white again? How long will this last? Apparently this could last forever. So a special rule had to be introduced to fix this. And this is the last remaining rule that we haven't talked about yet, the rule of Ko. It prohibits repeating a previous board position. It means that once black captures this stone, if white captures the stone back right away, this will repeat the same position. So white can't do this. But what if white really wants to capture the stone back? Can white do it? Yes, they can. White needs to create a diversion. White can play a move somewhere else on the board that will threaten something, that will tempt black to respond there. And then once an exchange has been played, the position is now changed, and white can go back and capture the stone. In this game, white decided to create a diversion this way. Atari on the three stones. Three stones are bigger than this one stone in the corner, so black is forced to respond and capture it. The position is now changed, and white captures this stone back. And now black has to look for a threat. How about playing this Atari? If white doesn't respond, then black will capture the stone, and the whole white corner is destroyed. So white has to respond to this. And now black takes the stone. Another threat from white, Atari on the three stones. Black captures. White takes. And another threat. Atari, and again, white has to capture. Black takes the stone, and at this point there are no more threats left for white. There are no more useful moves, no neutral points, so white just has to pass. White passes. Black connects. Now white passes again. Black passes. And the game is over. By the way, have you noticed that black hasn't spent any extra moves capturing those three white stones? That's because those stones are deep inside black's territory. They don't have any eyes, they can't escape anywhere, so those stones are already dead. And if black starts capturing them now, then black will have to put stones inside their own territory. And this will reduce it, which black doesn't really want. And now let's count the score. First we take the prisoners off the board. And now we return them back. The black prisoners go inside black territory. And the white prisoners go inside the white territory. Oh, it turns out that white's territory gets filled completely. Now we move the stones around to make it easier to count. White has zero points on the board, which means that white only has six and a half points of compensation, Comey. Black has seven points. And that means that black wins the game by the smallest margin possible, by half a point. Now, first of all, I was delaying telling you about the rule of Co for a reason. This Ko really makes the game more complex, but I recommend that you don't think about it too much. Just play your games and try to avoid playing the Ko if possible. If it happens, well, you just have to wing it. If you still have questions, which is totally normal by the way, this is one of the hardest games in the world, and you can join our friendly Discord community and ask any questions that's been bothering you there, and you'll get answers. The next thing you can do is just play a dozen games to get some practice, and I'll tell you where you can do that in one of the bonus lessons. Your main goal right now is to make sure that you really understand the rules of the game so that you can move on to a larger board to 13 by 13. And then finally from there, you can move on to 19 by 19 because it's there that the game of Go really starts to shine. There's a big and exciting adventure ahead of you and I'll be there to help you along the way. This is Go Magic. By the way, you can also watch these lessons on our platform, gomagic.org, except there, You'll watch them with interactive quizzes right within the lessons and practical exercises right after them. And if you enjoy watching these Go videos and you don't want to miss others like this one, go smash that like button, 
subscribe to our YouTube channel, and this is Go Magic.